Hey guys, it's Coach Benny here, and you are listening to The Bench Cast. I'm here with small arm, leg strong, and today we are talking about training partners. And we're talking about the value of having good training partners, what they bring to the table. The detriment of having bad training partners, what they take true. away from you. True. Uh, that's absolutely true. Didn't think of that. And uh, we're going to share some stories and have some fun and you know, talk about some of those periods of time when we had some really good training partners and those really good sessions that, you know, I, I definitely, every training cycle is a little bit different for me. I always end up training with different people. And uh, each training cycle brings along something different, different uh, atmosphere, different people. I've seen people come and go. Yeah, I've, yep. I've seen them all come and go. I've seen some really good lifters that were real good training partners of mine kind of fall off the wagon and stop lifting all together. Uh, I've seen really good guys just so for whatever reason life gets in the way and then they fall off the wagon but. I've had some real real good training partners move away that's rough move away yep. yeah that's a tough one um, it always sucks when you got a routine going and you know it's going to come to an end whether people got jobs or whatever um, but it's always crazy how no, no two training cycles ever seem the same you always got kind of different people in your corner and stuff um, but we'll talk about that today so why don't we jump into some of the value that having a good training partner brings to the table. What's, what do you get most out of having a good training partner, you think? One of the number one things is accountability. Like, That's a good one. You're, you're no longer working out for yourself, but you're working out to help the other person as well. So you're automatically, if you're not there on time, you know. Yeah, if you have good training partners, you don't want to let each other down. Yep. Uh, I remember an instance... And I really hate being catered to, um, so if I need someone to come wrap my knees or I need uh, you know, someone to come help me with my suit, I really don't like that. But um, it was really cool one time, uh, I was training with my buddy Andy and I needed some knee wraps done and I was in a suit, so kind of hard to do both. Uh, it was a really tight single ply suit and he drove, you know, I, I probably told him it's cool, he couldn't make it, but he drove. Uh, what ended up being almost two hours just because the traffic around here is nuts. But uh, I remember uh, he went out of his way to do that, and that was really cool. Um, but accountability is huge, you know, being there for each other. Um, it starts like it's like getting into a relationship. Yep. You know, it's the same thing, finding a good training partner. Um, Honestly, it's just as hard. Yeah, they got to have some kind of dating website just for <laughs> training partners. If they don't have that, I'm going to make it. You check the play store after they just gotta have an app just swipe right Training swipe partner left. App. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be gym it's style tinder, of workout yes yep. tinder for training partners i think that's a great idea someone's got it wrong with in their that. bio it should be their maxes so you know if, if they're if, on the same skill level absolutely this is great we're dropping fire so if no one takes this idea and runs with it i'm taking it you're not I'm gonna, gonna do it i'm gonna do it <laughs> you don't do it i'm gonna do it i'm starting i gotta get an app developer this is the next thing this is hot the training partner app. I don't know what I call it yet, but it's all, it's the same thing as dating. You know, you got to have good connection with this guy or this girl or whatever. You it's, know, you, you have to get along with them. That that's big. Right you got to get along with them. They can't clash with you. No. Uh, they got to kind of present the same attitude as you. As you're there to train. Um, because yeah, I've had some some shitty training partners as well in the past. And it's one of those things too with us. Uh, say a shitty training partner it's if you constantly push yourself but let's say you're taking a deload week let's say you're cutting intensity back way back and they still want to push you like there's a time and a place to you know, go all out yeah so bad training partners can push you beyond what you need to do for the day yeah good training partners man. yeah good good training yeah, partners good, won't no good training partners will push you right is you that see, what you meant you see it, it's hit or miss right so let's say i just got done with a meet and next week, my training partner wants to go for an eight rep max. It's like that's dumb. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. A good training partner will understand like what you oh, have wait, programmed your in. Period of time. Yes, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, um, pushing you. Be, I guess what I get most out of it is competition aspect. Uh, having someone that's relatively close to your numbers is always great. Because you constantly just want to get that one up on them. You just gonna keep yep. beating each other up. And you don't have to be like right on pace with them, but you got to be relatively close. Yeah, at uh, least you know similar numbers. I remember some of the best deadlift sessions I had was training with my buddy Wheels there, Nikki Wheels, 
And uh, at that time, he was deadlifting a lot less. I was deadlifting a lot more. So, you know, I wouldn't say we were close, but with my suit on, um, you know, we were within 100, I'd say, at, at one point. And it made for some really fun sessions because I'd be like, all right, now we're going to go hit the freaking rack pulls. And then we just keep <laughs> slathering on plates and battling it out for reps. And, uh, you know, just because he did more to me, it would piss me off every time when I come back with some real fire. And I wouldn't have had that aggressiveness if he wasn't there pushing each other. Uh, so that, I always remember that as being, a, you know, that major time when I was pushing my deadlift, making a lot of good progress, training with him. Because that's his favorite lift. He was I, all about that day. I got to say, one of the best deadlift sessions I've had for doing anything above a single or a double is with you. Doing the five rep maxes. Yeah, Remember, we you loaded pushing. up 475, and you're like, I'm going to do it. Yeah, that, we were pushing each other in that one. Yep. That yep. Comp- competitive aspect is a huge thing. Uh, getting a good training partner is going to push you like that. It's huge. Uh, the energy for the session. I've had some days where I come in the morning or something, and I'm just dragging, dragging ass. I don't want to train at all. It's like the last thing on my mind. But... You know, I, I gather myself, and a good training partner is going to start throwing weight on the bar. doesn't matter how you feel. You either sink or swim, and they just seem to uh, instill that energy in you. And I remember some of my very worst-feeling days end up turning into my some of my best sessions that I've ever had. It's funny how that happens. You start warming up, you start feeling great. Yeah, it's all it takes is a few sets on the bench or something, and I remember some of my best sessions. I, I couldn't... Even picture that happening earlier in the day, feeling like total garbage, and then all of a sudden shit starts picking up, and then you know you're in the midst of shit and you're feeling good, and then you're hitting PRs and. Um, that's, well, one person in particular, you try bringing low energy to a session with King Leo, it's not gonna fly. You, no. Yeah, you just feel instilled. Some dudes will call you out too. Yep. Some dudes aren't afraid to call you out. Um, I guess I'll jump right into when I was training intern at the gym back in the day. We had a really rowdy bunch, very different atmosphere than it is nowadays. Um, a lot of no bullshit dudes. We had some fun, but it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't joke around, have your phone out type of stuff. It was all strict training and pushing each other to new levels. And I guess I'll jump right into when I, I guess it would be my first real training partner in powerlifting and that was the junkyard dog Mike um, we call him the junkyard dog because he worked at a junkyard <laughs> and I think his family owned like junkyard or something so it was junkyard man by trade um, and I remember training with junkyard Mike and he was awesome so he kind of took me in I was just a new intern you know sometimes it's hard for the interns to kind of yep. um, find their way into the crews but He took me in, he kind of showed me what was going on a bit, and we were relatively close on a lot of lifts, and we would push each other hard, and I know when I beat him, he kind of looked a little pissed when he could get the best of me. I was certainly pissed about it, but we had some great battles, and he always seemed to pump me up and take me to the next level, and the cool thing he did for me once, too, is I needed um, some heeled shoes, some Ollie shoes, I'm talking about getting some. And he just happened to have an old pair. And he was just like, oh, what size is he? I said, nine and a half. He's like, perfect. He's a nine and a half. So he just threw me his shoes. I asked him how much you want for him. He just said, I'll just pay it forward. Gave me his shoes, his heeled shoes. I still got those things. I still sometimes use them. Uh, but that was really awesome. But you know, that's what good training partners do for each other. Um, you know, they do those types of things and just help each other out. So everyone wants each other to do better. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. It comes like a little mini team. A good training partner will know that the rising tide raises all the ships. That so as deep. you succeed, your training partner succeeds. Want to go up together. Mm-hmm. That's deep. Another deep quote by Elvis <laughs> on the air. But I remember those days with Junkyard Mike, and we would uh, we would get out the gym, and we walk over to his truck, take a look at some of his Junkyard items, talk about the future of the Junkyard biz, <laughs> and we shoot a little shit about training. So that was a lot of fun. I remember those times out the gym, just talking, training, and where we want to be in future years. Um, you know what came up last weekend? I met my buddy Pat Adams, 
He used to go to gym way back in the day. 2014, he got nationally ranked on the bench press. Yeah, he was, I think he was a 148 lifter, rather little guy, um, but he was benching 275, 280, something like that, I think. And I saw him for the first time, must have been three years. And I remember coming back to New York to visit. I wasn't living here at the time, about four years ago. He lived in Brooklyn, and uh, I remember coming up, and I said, hey, you want to train together? And we went out to the city together, and we went to that Chelsea Piers area or whatever. It was a pretty cool setup up top. Um, but we would train. We were training squats that day. And uh, I always had a lot of time, a fun time training with him. And I remember that day I came in to visit, and we went out to the city. We got donuts. As First you thing we did. Perfect. Yeah, it, their thing was um, they pound like two donuts before they train. This is this they is the <laughs> ideal pre-workout <laughs> setup. I don't see any issue here. You guys would have been great. <laughs> they would go. We went to the lobby, a couple donuts down. Uh, we set, fueled them for the session. Like, all right, pound some of these mother effing donuts. And then uh, we went. It were good donuts, too. This was a fancy donut place in the city. They got a lot of good combos. So it wasn't your standard dunks or nothing. Um, but we went up there. We trained. I think I hit a good squat PR that day. And I remember when we were walking through the city, he told me um, something that kind of always hits home for me still today. As he was, And I was only squatting like 500 at the time in wraps. And then he says to me, yeah, isn't it crazy? Out of everyone in this whole city, there's a lot of people around that you squat more than most of them do. Because, <laughs> you know, you're in the top rankings almost at that time. And if you think of all the people that do this shit, all the people in the city, they're probably not squatting 500. Nope, not at all. So it just kind of really sets things in perspective for you when you're feeling discouraged. There's all these guys doing more weight than you. That out of the total population... First, a lot of people don't even lift weights. So you're already ahead of, like, the 95% of people. But you're really in an elite category when you think about what you specifically do, the amount of weight you can lift. You go to a commercial gym, you load up 500 in the squat rack, everyone's looking at you. Yeah, if you got four plates on there. Everyone's staring. Everyone's looking at yep. you. Because no one really wants to do that shit to themselves. <laughs> but I always remember that when he told me that, and I, I think of that. All the time, out of all these people in the world, in the world, Elvis, <laughs> not just that city, in the world, um, you know, you, you do something that a lot of people can't do. So it makes you feel good about yourself. Yep. So when you're feeling down, always remember what Pat Adams said. But I saw him at uh, the meet last week, and it was the USAPL Northeast Regionals, and I guess he was there helping out his girlfriend. I asked him if he was lifting anymore, but he said no. Uh, but I tried, to, I tried to sway him into getting one session done. It always yep. starts with one session. But he's a good example of one of those guys I love training with, and he, uh, he kind of fell off the bandwagon for whatever reason. You know, he's going to school and stuff, um, doing his whole thing. So, unfortunate, but life happens. Yep. So, so you can't always stay on the bandwagon. Sometimes, that's true. Even if you're more experienced than somebody else, you kind of take them under your wing, kind of show them the ropes. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, just like Junkyard Dog did for me. Uh, I'll try to do, you know, when a new intern comes in. I know Brian was awesome. We just recently had Brian Hale um, come into the gym. And he was pretty open right away. I knew I was a real shy guy. Like, I wasn't very open. That was a good breaking in process for me. Uh, but me and Brian kind of clicked right away. Uh, he's a fake Pats fan. He's really a Bills guy. He's an upstate guy. Um, but he told me he likes the Pats, so I connected with him right away. <laughs> It wasn't no Jets bullshit, but um, I had him come over to the gym. Surprised that he actually did. You know, I, a lot of times I invite people over here right to bench with us, and uh, you know, not everyone takes to it quick, get nervous. <laughs> but he came in, he got the job done. What do you hit? Three oh five over there on yep. our record board. He did really well, and then he actually came down to help me at my last meet where I hit the seven ten bench, and he was an instrumental part of that. Really. Um, you know, make sure I had everything taken care of at the meet. Um, so that was really cool. So I like bringing him in, kind of showing him what everything's all about. And, you know, I tried to do that with all the interns because I remember what people did for me. And I'm just trying to pay it forward in that regards. 305 under 220 is not bad. No, not at all. He was a strong bencher. He's a strong bencher. There's a lot of interns we had um, that I, I really enjoyed training with. And, uh, it just brings me back to those days when I was, uh, I didn't know too much about powerlifting myself when I began, and I had to learn a lot. 
I, and uh, there's no such thing as stupid questions. Everyone really helped me out. Got to be honest with you, I had some pretty bad mentors. Yeah. Yep. It's like, oh, you saw my bench press when I first came in. Yeah. Yep. We, we didn't. Yeah, I mean, I was no better, really. I didn't squat until college. Like, I had mentors in high school. Found a deadlift really early, though. <laughs> deadlifts, you know, it's not. It's a little bit of technique to it. I mean, yeah, there is a just, lot of technique, but you got to be aggressive. Yep. We got guys on um, our big benches team that uh, I just think need and still a lot more aggressiveness that I tell them all the time. I'm like, you, you probably just got to forget every cue in the book and just freaking lift and get angry or something because um, you're going to get way more out of that on a deadlift. You got no eccentric portion. You got to just bring it from the you start. You just got to load. So you got to get your, your mind amped up for something like that. You know, you're going to be better off. Instead of trying to pinpoint every little aspect of the technique, you're going to be so much better off um, just bringing that aggressiveness and just uh, you know finding some way to dig deep, go to a dark place, think about babies dying, you know, whatever dark shit, sick shit you got to do. Speaking uh, of babies dying, <laughs> I'm actually a happy guy. I deadlifted a PR too. Sweet loving. You, That's a banger. You remember George uh, Lehman? No. Great deadlifter, like north of 300 pounds now. I think his last big deadlift was above 900. Oh, did you do a program from? Something? Yeah, yeah. But way I back when, you bringing that up. His bodybuilding.com name was Baby Slayer. Okay. Because when he was real young, one of his brothers died. I think uh, it was a stillbirth. He mm-hmm. blamed himself. So he goes to that deep, dark place every time he pulls. I see. Baby Slayer. Yeah, uh, Ray Williams had some sort of story too. Yep, Ray Williams. son, and it was very deep. Lost he always kid. thinks that, yep. 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 So that's, uh, you know, whatever whatever gets you in that mental state, whatever you got to do. Um, you got to pull from where you got to pull. You know. So you got to go to deep places. Yep. Um, I'm usually from a happy place. You know, I don't really get angry. Sometimes I do. It depends. Deadlifts <laughs> make me angry enough. The deadlift itself is just a frustrating <laughs> movement for you. This effing movement. <laughs> <laughs> How about the different personalities that some of these training partners got uh, used to have? Have I, I've been through the spectrum. Oh, I've man. I've been through the spectrum. I've had dudes that scare shit out of me, so I don't even want to train that day. But they, in a way, motivate me. And I've been around dudes um, who are just very lax and need to talk about training a little bit more. But I've been through the spectrum. Uh, all different kind of personalities. Some dudes, um, very numbers-based, too. I remember Eric Adolph back in the day. Um, he was awesome to train with because I could ask him anything. And he was always, I was always asking him stuff because he was very approachable. And uh, he always had good answers for me. And he was like a technician with the numbers. You know, whatever he was doing for his program, he always brought his laptop or his iPad. He had all his spreadsheets going. He was real always, technical with it, real precise. He was precise. plugging all his shit in. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool that he was tracking everything so meticulously. Um, but he was always one of my go-to guys to ask things because he was more approachable. I guess, um, whereas some dudes that I would train with, they scared the shit out of me. Man, I'm telling you, I used to train with a gorilla, straight up, right out of the jungle, and he was the strongest person I knew, and he was terrifying to lift with. Yeah. That's hard. Why is that? Because this was back in high school, right? So this dude is just, you know, loading up five plates on the bench. He didn't squat back then, but he deadlifted north of six. It was just terrifying. It's like yeah. being around a mountain, you're yeah, like a child. Weights. Well, I was around dudes that would just chew your ass out about this, like, little things. Um, I remember one time I couldn't hand out, or I was handing off wrong, he said, or I, was, I couldn't hand out of the rack. It's like 315 the rack. It's like you're starting to approach my max deadlift at the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're asking me to shrug it out to you and make it smooth? Yep. That's tough, but I would get wrecked. And I was like, shit, he's asking me to hand out the freaking rack. And I knew I was going to get wrecked after because it wasn't going to come out smooth. Yep, yep. I could have said it off the bat. So then he just ripped into me. And, you know, I'm not one to, like, fire back or nothing. Um, I'm very lax in my approach. So if, if someone screws something up for me, I'll just kind of take them aside and explain what I expect next time. But I've trained with dudes who will just rip into you and make you feel real <laughs> shitty. So I've been in the, the spectrum both ways. Um, I'm, I'm more that calm approach. I, I appreciate that. I'm also more calm because things yeah. don't get solved, you know. No. But some dudes like firecrackers. They just go off. Yeah. You know, um, we were talking about hard knocks. And uh, I remember from that first uh, – the first episode, I don't know if you remember, Jarvis Landry did that little team meeting there. 
Yep. And he's just chewing out all the wide receivers because they were, they were kind of skipping on um, practices because they kind of faking injuries and weren't that bad. And he just he was ripping them. Just there's no effort there. That motivated yep. me. But um, I thought that was a productive, aggressive um, conversation with everyone. It's having someone who can call you out on your shit when you do it is yeah. trem- like not someone who makes things up. Yeah, you and, and you need that, especially being a good leader too. He just kind of took charge and he told people this shit's got to be cut. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was really productive and cool. That's the juice. Bless him. Um, so I started bringing up some past training partners. There's still some stories I want to share. Um, what's some good stories you can kick us off here? What's some good stories uh, of past training partners that you've had? Anything come to mind for you? I'm trying to think of my phone just like setting off right now. <laughs> yeah, you got everything's blowing up over there. Jeez. Oh, man. You got to watch on. You got a thing. It's, it's Get crazy. the live going. Yep. We got any comments coming in with the IG live? Yeah, we got got some from Bench Buddy. That was pretty good. All right. T- let's, let's hear that first. Let's kick that off. Ben, We're sharing stories sharing of some stories. training partners that you've had in the past. So Bench Buddy actually likes training with us because you always some good competition. And motivation mm-hmm. helped to push without having to worry about shoddy plate loading or changing, etc. We're pretty smooth operation. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, uh, especially our Friday sessions, I know when I'm getting up in the 700s, you know, we're not going to have time to calculate or get it right. And we're trying to avoid errors and keep guys safe. So I write the plates on the board <laughs> ahead of time um, so that we're kind of all on the same page. That's always real good, real handy. Yeah, especially, you always you know, want to try to avoid those misloads. Especially when killer. you're loading up so much. Killer. Yep. See, I used to have one of these training partners uh, back in college. So he was the worst deadlifter I've ever seen in my entire life. And back then I was also the worst bencher. Mm-hmm. So he was a great bencher. I was an all right deadlifter. So we kind of, I never wanted to go bench, never wanted to go deadlift. So the accountability we had to each other, like we're both going to be here at these exact days to train with each other on this one lift. And no matter if we do different accessories, we do different secondary movements, we're both going to either bench or deadlift together. And I got to tell you, my bench shot up, his deadlift shot up, like everything improved. So it was productive for both of yeah. you. Completely productive. Usually. Yep. I remember the guy that got me started powerlifting, Morgan Mitchell, back home. Uh, he's a very old school guy. Uh, he's up there. I mean, he must be running through his 50s now, uh, something like that. But um, old school guy, old school approach. You know, he's been training with a lot of good crews. Um, and so he knows the deal. Like, everyone's accountable to each other. If you say, you know, be there, you got to be there. And he would even take a two hour drive down just to make sure when it's someone's meet, you know, when on this, on this particular crew, you know, when you know it's someone's meet time, everyone will be there to help that person, especially if they're multiplying and whatnot. They need to the help. Um, it's no bullshit there. You'll you'll probably be kicked out. You know, it's not a membership gym. The guy's it's a guy's gym. Yeah, it's his own gym. You know? Like he invites invitation only. So if you're not account if you're not there to help out when it's someone's meet and you're part of that team, then you're in trouble. But he would drive down there and help out. It's a two hour drive. Um but he was old school, and we would train squats on, it was a Thursday, and I'd always load up in the UMass lunchroom there, we'd get this Thai shit, best shit I've had. Bamboo shoots in it, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> best squat feel you're going to get. Rice is, it was the green curry chicken, bamboo shoots, ugh, <laughs> so good. That sounds dangerous, that's like having pre-workout Mexican. It was perfect, it was a perfect amount, <laughs> fills you right up, Oh, perfect squat feel, and I know I went home. And we would always squat Thursdays, and we're really good hitting a bunch of PRs. And um, you know, we had a little crew there. We always help each other out. And I remember one particular day, I got home. I was tired as ass all day. I don't think I had a cup of coffee. I had my meal, and I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna take a quick nap on my bed. You know, maybe got like an hour. Uh, did not set any alarms or anything. My mistake, or I might have. I don't know. Uh, I did not wake up. I woke up. I guess he came to my house." went past my house and uh that was it and we didn't really train any more thursdays <laughs> <laughs> he never seemed to be around mm. when i needed to be there and and that pretty much killed it yep right there just oversleeping killed that whole vibe for that thursday session but no one to blame but myself on that one but damn let him down. still it's i let i feel like i let people down and then 
that killed like those Thursday vibes, and I was really feeling that session. But just that one time killed it, and I learned my lesson. <laughs> if you have a good thing going, don't mess with it. You know, make sure you're available. Um, Especially when you schedule out in advance, nothing sucks more than having a training partner not show up. Kind of when you're expecting them. Yep. So then you have your own workout, and then it's not yeah. the same. And it's real tough, and it especially like now I'm real dependent on people. Shirt work coming up to a meet, um, need to make sure I have people to train with. It can be difficult, you know. Luckily, we get enough people in here on a regular basis so that you can always do the sessions pretty much, uh, get what we need done. But it's tough, and I remember that one instant. I always tell people that story. I effed up Thursday sessions, fell asleep, <laughs> but shit happens. And, uh, you know, I learned from my lesson there. Do you have anything like that where you overslept on a dude and left him hanging? Oh, man, I, I, it's bad, but I leave people hanging all the time. <laughs> oh, it's because I, I commit to too many things, but everyone wants to train with me, but they're not really doing my type of training. So it's like I kind of half-heartedly agree. I got you. if I'm not amped up to train with you on, like, some bullshit day, I'm like, I'm not doing calves and shoulders. I'm sorry. It's like I'll say I'm going, but when you tell me the workout you're doing, I'm, i got to be out, dog. Yeah. I got you. Uh, speaking of back in the day at the gym, we were talking about uh, how that crew was so different than it was today. There was this old crew at the gym talking 2014. That was a hardcore. Um, and then over the years, it kind of went lighter. I think more people getting into lifting, um, but not to the extent they were back in the day. And now it's a lot of intro people. Like I said, people getting into it, so the vibes have changed a lot. But that in between time, you know, we were still pretty. We were still had an aggressive crew, uh, in a different way, with a lot more joking around. But everyone was real strict about their training and, and making progress. And I remember one particular night, we had King Jose, Jose Martinez, um, and Big Pops, as we call them, Big Pops at the gym, and. Uh, yeah, older guy, he's still trying to push through the weights. I was trying to keep up with the young guns. He was real adamant about getting to the top of the master's list and national rankings. And uh, we had a good crew down, really busy nights, real popping nights. Like the whole place was banging, loud music, deadlifts was going nuts. Very different still from today. And um, I remember that particular night, Big Pops did 585. Or, I'm sorry, Jose did 585. This battle for the crown. For three or, or he did something. He hit a PR. And then he's like, if I did this, Pops, you got to go for that 585. And, you know, me being the coach, I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. And, uh, you know, I think I probably talked him down from doing 600, something nutty like that. But uh, he took 585, which was, what, six plates? And... Uh, he pulled it three times. It was shitty looking. I saw a helicopter on the third one. He turns around to get to the camera. He's looking at the camera. Turns his head all the way around. So I already knew, yeah, this is horrible. Sticks his tongue out. Starts, like, shaking his head, making faces and shit. Uh, I see the weight start helicoptering. And I'm just in my back of my head. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. It's like slow-mo, seeing something happen before it happens. And then as that weight comes around a little bit, we just see his arms snap up. And there goes his bicep, steps right back up. Had a hard time doing anything with his arm after that. And, uh, you know, he keeps looking at it, and he tries to, like, flex his arm and stuff. And we just know, yeah, he ripped that shit out. And we were like, big pops, man, you got to go to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but he... He, he just kept saying, he kept yelling back at everyone. He was like, now you mother effers remember I hit that 585 for three. <laughs> and off he goes to the hospital, drove himself. Oh, and, man. uh yeah, that was pretty much the last time we saw that dude. I love Big Pops, but I think, like, they got him. Someone got him. Yep. We haven't seen him again. Jeez, that was it. Man. Um, but that was pretty wild. I won't remember that. Or that night, I always remember. And... Just the level everyone was pushing each other. It was like Jose had to hit this PR, so Big Pops had to hit this PR. No way he was getting that 583 if he had to come in, or 585 if he had to come in and train by himself. No, not at all. No way. But, uh, you know, that the whole atmosphere pumped each other up. I remember when I was pushing through some deads, uh, and I was sick of being caught in the freaking power rack. We put the, power, the guys in the power rack that weren't um, quite pulling the same amount of weight. 
as everyone else, and I was sick of that shit. So I remember going off one night. Everyone was rowdy. My hips were feeling good, so I just went off. I never pulled 475 for three so quicker, so fast in that night. Uh, but everyone was amping each other up. And then I got out there and ripped 500 off the floor. Um, then I just wish I went for more. <laughs> That night, that particular night. Man, I remember you, because you talk a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. And that that was there for the five rep max. When you pulled, you pulled four seventy five for five, and you were like, "You're up," and you had this look in your eye, like, "I won." You, yeah. you already counted that you won. Yeah. And then I pulled it for three, a clean three, and then there was another one. The fourth one's a little shaky. On that last one, bloody nose. Like, not, not even, like, off the ground yet. Nose starts bleeding. I finish <laughs> yeah. it. It's shaky. It's not, it's not like, rounded dog, you know, or anything, but it's, it's not the prettiest deadlift in the world. But I finish it. I wrap it up. You guys are asking for my right. I'm like, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Betty's not going up anymore. Guy feels great. Yep. I know you did all you had in that 475 that you were going to put on that day. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't like losing. Nope. You don't like losing. I don't know what you were going to call on that for that five, but I would have hit it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, was, I wasn't in comp prep mode. If you're two guys getting ready for a meet, too, um, that's pretty wild. You know, pushing each other during a meet time. Yeah, we pushed each other pretty good in those deadlifts. Um, I remember Laurel was always uh, big on pushing the deads, too. And uh, in those sessions, I would egg him on. You know, I wasn't really lifting the weight he did, but I was egging him on. I remember he started bleeding out his ear once. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, that's the day he made it. He just started bleeding out your ear. That's real freaky. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. How about uh, about traveling? Traveling to train with people. You don't see that too often anymore. You don't see that too much. It's, uh, It's a shame, too. Because to get to the environment that you need to go to, you know, you to get be around that. Yeah. It's not necessarily around your corner. Yeah. If I only trained in, like, my neighborhood, I'd have a choice of Planet Fitness. Back in the day, it was Bally's or LA Fitness. Yeah. And I'm not going to get that environment. No one wants to travel. But you have to. I mean, even if you just go for a session. I mean, Vinny DiZenzo made a good post not too long ago. He went to uh, a few different places. Uh, he traveled to some gym, got some good work in there. He went to Elite FTS, uh, got some good work in there with Dave Tate and everyone. And then uh, he went to Hellbent Barbell. He's been training there more regularly. But um, you got to do that type of stuff. You got to learn from different people. You know, he, he said there's a bunch of gyms around. You just got to uh, get out to them. I just trained down with Big Rich, something I've been meaning to do. But, yeah, your weekends get filled quick yeah. and whatnot. But sometimes you just got to make the time, and I'm really happy I did because I learned a lot of valuable things that are going to escalate me. Um, there's always something you can take away. So traveling to get out there. Like there's some people that would travel four hours regularly to get the west side in the morning to train. Um, and I remember traveling three hours to come up here when I lived in Massachusetts to train at our gym one night because I wanted to get the knee wraps in. It was right before a meet, so I was real serious about that. Um, but some dudes don't even want to travel 40 minutes to go to a gym. I mean, for a whole training cycle, for like four or five months, I traveled about an hour because it was traffic. Yeah. To so just train with a dude so we could deadlift together. It was just one day a week, but it yeah. was the greatest gains I've ever had in like a short period. Yeah, and that's something that I got to look to do some more of too, um, just getting out there, finding more people to train with on a regular basis and just keep learning from everyone else because everyone kind of brings something new to the table you might not have heard from before and the competitive aspect of it I'm telling you um, huge especially when you get to a higher level like we said before if you squat 400 at the gym the commercial gym everyone stares at you mm-hmm. you're not going to find a good training partner necessarily there yeah that's true that's true you got to uh, you know it's and the harder it is once you get up there yep. for find people that are actually going to push you um you know, there's no one at the gym right now even close pushing my numbers on bench. Um, and I don't see anyone coming in yet to do so um, that trains with us regularly anyway. So I would have to go somewhere else. Yeah, you got to gotta make to go somewhere else. And there's a lot of people benching more to me. And, and I would love to get in there with them because I know once I see them put up a little more weight to me, I'm going to start feeling real pissed off. And that's when the gains <laughs> happen. 
<laughs> That's when you start hopping the game train. Um, well, one of the best things I learned was you generally rise to the level of your competition. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I'm like just shooting threes, you know, just with neighborhood kids and everything, I'm not going to get as good as if I just traveled somewhere else and played with people who only played. Like we used to back in the day, we used to pick up football games, mm-hmm. and the best games they ever had were the kids from Brooklyn because they used to play on the street, and we have yeah. a turf field. And just the skill level difference, like, you got better playing with them. Yeah, you had to escalate your yeah, game. Yeah, because you don't want to lose. You're still competitive, and you bring all you can bring onto that field. Yeah, I can see that. That's, uh, that you probably get your shit handed to you at first, and then you just have to rise. You just have to rise. You're just going to continue to get One of hit. my greatest football memories is juking one of the kids from Brooklyn. Yeah, <laughs> remember, I broke his ankle, sent them to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that's what uh, competition does for you. You gotta rise above. But uh, real important aspects. The guys you can't get out there. You gotta find some people to train with. Look up those power gyms, and uh, you know just just see what's out there and learn from people. Um, when our Friday sessions here, I want to talk a little about our Friday sessions here. Got a lot of different people, a lot of different levels. But best thing that could have done is that top five board. Oh, that's behind us. Yep. You need something like that because everyone wants to fight to make that board and to knock people off that board and that competition um, really rises you above. I know for certain uh, I want to bring some people in and are going to knock me down that raw board there because I know it's going to escalate me to push, that push raw my max. numbers and get that up and that's only going to help everything else. So I'm actively trying to find people to bump that board up so looking for some mid 400, 500 pound benchers to come in here and wreck some shit a little bit. So, uh, you know, Turn let us know. Turn that dial up to 11. Yeah. So really big aspect. We got any more story people you want to bring up in uh, general? No, but I, I got two more questions to ask for you. Sure. Who do you think is the most dynamic training duo that you know of? Because I'll, I'll say right off the board, it got to be like Larry Wheels and Black Tom Cruise. Okay. Yeah, I see them pushing each other all the time. Yeah. Um, in the videos, it's the hype man. The energy is electric around them. Yeah. Yeah, the hype. You can feel the hype. Feel the hype. It motivates me just watching it. <laughs> you know you got something special if you're motivating people just watching your videos. <laughs> um, mine, I guess, isn't so powerlifting related. Because, again, I'm not the, not the best fan of powerlifting. <laughs> um, I don't really actively go out and watch a bunch of people's videos. Uh, so, I guess... Out of recent memory, the stuff that I would see uh, between Branch Warren, Johnny Jackson, yep, uh, out there in Metro Flex in Texas, that was some real banging shit. I'd see those those videos. Cause I watched. I was in bodybuilding back in the day, and I would watch a lot of those DVDs and different different documentaries and whatnot. And they had something going where they just they'd show up at a time, and you go in there and you're just bust an ass. And they their training styles just throwing weights. Uh, they're just picking up some massive weights and tossing it and they're usually if you look they're usually using the same weight Yep, their training's real aggressive. So yep. they're they, They're really pushing each other using the same weight probably trying to do more reps One up the other guy a little bit. You do nine. I'll do 11 But I don't know if each would be uh, As good without each other and that's what makes a good duo. It's the combo that really yep. Yeah So I think that's what makes a good combo that's the question you're asking. You know, you take one away, the other guy's not as good. And that's what I see there. I feel like they both elevate each other, uh, and they did at that time. So I guess that would be my answer to that. And I think a lot of people can attest to that. I think that's a well-known Yeah, that's duo. a pretty good duo. Yeah. And then last one. If you had to pick any celebrity to be your training partner for a day, it doesn't have to be powerlifting, mm-hmm. you know, who would you pick? Yeah, we were talking about that, and I'd have to go Tom Brady because I'm a big Pats fan, and um, I think he'd wreck my ass in some pliability training. I honestly think you could probably <laughs> use a little more pliability. I'd, to I'd probably scare him lifting weights, <laughs> and he would probably make me pretty pliable. Yep. He'd probably start coming up to me and smacking me with pads and bending me in weird ways, and I'm cool with that. You bring I'm pretty stiff. You so bring a big work. bowl of strawberries. Will be bring a big bowl of avocados. Freak each other out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It would be a good mix. That would be fun. I'd like to go to that facility, see what it's all about, the TB12 there, see it when we go to Gillette. So um, be interested to see what the hell's going on in there, get on a foam roll or something. Yep. I mean, everybody knows that I, I have a love affair for Dwayne for Dwayne DeRock Johnson. 
Oh, that's a good one. I, I feel like I just got to. That's gotta, a good one. Man, that'd be, that'd be way too that'd intense. That'd be something. Probably get if wrapped get up. at four in the morning. Probably, probably be dead for the next two weeks. I think it'd be worth mm. it. <laughs> yeah, you know, you train with a guy like, when you train with other people like that, um, you get better because you feel like you have to be better. Like, yeah. You know, you get nervous, you get those butterflies, and then you're like, shit, and now I got to do good. Yeah, so like, you know you're going to do good. Um, there's no way around it. You got to do good. So, um, I was, it's like a big stage. If you rise in a big stage. Yep. You know, it's one of those things. You don't want to look bad. You got to bring it. You got no option. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. That's about it for a training partner edition. Make sure you tag your training partners. You thank them for all they do for you. All right, we need our uh, training partners out there. And I'll let you know when we uh, start developing that app, Tinder for Training, (laughs) so you can find your long-lost training partner. Find you guys, your perfect match. You guys deserve each other. Be there for each other in the hard times and the good times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll get right on that app. So thanks for watching or listening or both, whatever the hell you're doing. We got it on the YouTubes. And uh, make sure, if you want to take a second, leave a five-star review on iTunes. Leave a little comment. How we can improve the show, what you'd like to see, anything I want to hear from you. We really, really appreciate that. Helps us bump us up. So if you like listening to this on the regular, help uh, bring it to more ears. And uh, we really, really appreciate that, guys. So it takes a second. And uh, you can find us uh, at Big Benches on Instagram. A lot of stuff up there. Make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube. We just broke over 1,000 subscribers, and that's growing. So really happy to see that. Uh, shit ton of bench content. It's you awesome. Will not, not find something. Puts a lot of work into that. A lot of good tips in there. YouTube is phenomenal. That's where everything goes, guys. All those little Instagram snippets all comes from YouTube. Uh, I can link videos till the cows come home. So much good content on there. Go check out the YouTube. And, uh, you know, make sure you're always keeping an update with the website. We've got some new bench clinics coming up. Texas. October 27th, uh, working on coming out to California, hopefully, uh, soon enough. And we got some lifters out there, too. And we um, got something coming up upstate New York that I'm going to be announcing. Well, at the time you hear this, it'll be out. But you can find that, too, on our store page. You can buy the ticket. That's a $35 ticket, guys. And those proceeds are going to the Tom Brown Memorial Fund. Uh, so... Make sure you sign up for that if you're in the upstate New York area. It's a chance to get out to one of our clinics if you're local. And I tell you, you will not uh, be disappointed. You will take something home, and it will be well, well worth it. So check that out. That is November 30th or 31st. How many days in November? (laughs) It's the day before December starts, 6.30 p.m. Friday night. So check that out. And you know where to find Elvis. Find me at Small Arm Leg Strong on Instagram and on Twitter at Big Quad Tiny Arm. He doesn't do anything training related on there or any posts, so if you want to <laughs> message him something about coffee, he'd really appreciate that so we can talk the shit with someone. We're, we're going to post some things up this week. It's going to be a good week. All right. He claims it'll be a good week. We'll see. <laughs> All, right, All right, guys. guys. You've been listening to <coughs> The Bench Cast.